Cuphead is genuinely my favorite game of all time. Everything from the gameplay to the visuals to the music is absolutely amazing. I'd love to make a massive video about this game, but well, I don't really have the time for that right now. I mean, I'm already working on a video about the Freddy Fazbear time traveling ball pit stuff that's gonna be at least an hour long. I can't work on a big Cuphead video in addition to that. And so, I began trying to come up with ideas for a much shorter Cuphead video. It took a while, but eventually I thought of one. What if I answered the age old question people have been asking for decades, centuries even? How many Cuphead bosses are edible? I mean, when you think about it, a lot of the bosses in this game are either animals, living objects, or you know, living food. So a good chunk of them should be edible, right? Okay, I know that technically anything is edible if you try hard enough. I could eat the microphone in my hand right now if I really wanted to, but I probably wouldn't survive that. So in order for something to be considered edible, you have to be able to eat it without getting sick or dying. However, for the bosses you can't eat, I don't just want to say that they aren't edible and leave it at that. I also want to find out what will happen to you if you actually eat them because sure, why not? Oh, and by the way, any human is automatically not edible because that would be cannibalism. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, let's start finding out how many bosses can be your dinner. Okay, I think the answer to the question, is root pack edible, is pretty obvious. I mean, they're literally just vegetables, you can definitely eat those. That being said, you have to make sure to wash these vegetables before eating them in order to remove any dirt or bacteria, as accidentally consuming those two things can lead to nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and even hospitalization. So, uh, make sure to wash your vegetables. Goopy Legron is a slime, and you can't eat slime. There are actually recipes out there for edible slime, but I doubt that Goopy's meant to be that, as edible slime seems to have a bit more of a rough texture compared to regular slime, and Goopy definitely seems to be smooth. There are many recipes for non-edible slime, but an ingredient pretty much all of them have in common is glue. According to an article by Mount Sine, which I definitely pronounced wrong, eating large amounts of glue can lead to abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, which is why eating slime is not a good idea. Then there's Goopy's final form, returned to a gravestone. I looked up if rocks are edible, and according to this ABC article about a woman that eats rocks, doing so can induce parasites your body and tear internal tissue, which is not something you want. Or maybe you do, I don't know, I don't know you. Anyways, Goopy Legrand is not edible in both a slime and gravestone form. <laughs> Hildeberg starts off as a zeppelin, but then turns into a cloud in the moon. The website Glutenshire Remembers World War 1 says that zeppelins contain metal, wood, and metal alloy duraluminum. I'm going to be talking about metal and wood later in this video, so I'm going to be talking about duraluminum instead of those two. Duraluminum, or duralumin, is one of the earliest types of age hardenable aluminum copper alloys, and it contains 95% aluminum, 4% copper, 0.5% magnesium, and 0.5% magnesium. I couldn't find any results for what happens if you eat duraluminum, so instead I looked up what happens if you eat aluminum, since that's what duraluminum is mostly comprised of. And according to Marham, eating aluminum can cause alcohol. Alzheimer's disease, osteoporosis, kidney failure, and other health problems. I didn't know what osteoporosis was, so I looked it up, and it's a condition where your bones become weak, so that's not good. So the Zeppelin is not edible, and I'm gonna assume that the moon isn't either, since they both seem to be made out of similar materials, but can you eat the cloud that Hildebrook turns into? Well, technically, you can't eat clouds since they're made of water, you just have to squeeze the air out first, apparently. I'm not sure how you do that, but oh well. I'm still gonna say that Hildebrook is not edible, though, since the Zeppelin and moon are a larger part of the fight than the clouds. <laughs> Apparently, carnation is, as the name suggests, a carnation flower, and according to Nature's Pride, carnations are in fact edible. Well, their petals are edible at least, as eating the leaves and stem can cause mild skin irritations. Also, apparently, carnations are used as decorations in pasta dishes sometimes, so I don't know, cool, I guess. Hello, everyone. Kermit the Frog here. Maybe and Croaks are two frogs, and you can eat frog legs according to the original Muppet movie and the Robert Holy Company, two of my favorite sources of information. The legs are the only edible parts of the frog, though, so they don't try to eat anything else. Ooh, piece of candy. Despite looking like human, Baroness Von. Bonbon is most likely edible. You see, this boss fight happens in a place made of candy, a uh, candy land, if you will. So, if we follow that logic, the Baroness must also be made of candy. Oh, and the little mini bosses you fight before the Baroness are edible as well. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that the Muffin is the only person on this entire list that deserves to be eaten because he's just the worst and I hate him. <laughs> Okay, what even is Beppy the Clown? He doesn't seem to be human as he transforms into a big balloon and a spinning ride during the fight, but he also doesn't look like any of the clowns I know. I think the guy is just a freak. Go back to yourself, freak! Even though I don't know what he is, I'm gonna say that Beppy is an edible since he kind of resembles a human, and also, I don't even want to be near this freak, let alone eat him. Jimmy the Great is a genie, and much like Beppy, he kind of resembles a human, so I'm just gonna say that he's not edible. It's a Ender Dragon! Grimmastic is a dragon, and I obviously couldn't look up if dragons were edible on account of them not being real, so I looked up what they were inspired by and found a BBC article saying that dragons were inspired by snakes and lions. Using that information, I looked up if those two animals were edible, and surprisingly, they were. Snake meat is actually considered a delicacy in Thailand and Vietnam, the lions are apparently not eaten anywhere very much, I guess Mufasa's death was just that tragic. Assuming that Grimmastic is made up of lion or snake parts, he is edible.
Wally Warbles is definitely edible. The fight literally ends with two birds seasoning him on his deathbed. That being said, the baby bird that shows up in this fight is not edible because you cannot eat baby animals. I'm still gonna consider Wally to be edible though, since the baby bird is only one phase of the fight. You like jazz? <gasps> Remember Honey Bottoms and her little goons are all bees, and surprisingly enough, bees are edible. According to Oxford Academic, the northern and northeastern ethnic groups in Thailand actually eat honeybees. One thing to keep in mind is that this article was written in 1998, so it might be outdated. Maybe people just didn't know the risk of eating Jerry Seinfeld back in the day. But I found an article by the National Institutes of Health saying that eating a bee does not pose a risk of toxicity for the majority of the population, though it can apparently cause allergic reactions. So, surprisingly enough, rumor honey bottoms is actually edible. Captain Brown Napier is a human and cannot be eaten, but what about a ship? No. I searched it up, but I couldn't find anything for what happens if you eat wood, aside from the fact that our stomachs can't digest it. Now, when our stomachs can't digest food, we get gastroparesis, or stomach paralysis, which according to the Cleveland Clinic, can lead to things like nausea, vomiting, upper abdominal pain, constipation. It's important to point out that the article is talking about food, and not wood, but I assume that eating wood result in similar symptoms. Either way, don't eat pirate ships, especially if this guy's a captain. Jolly good show! Sally Stage plays also human, making her not edible, but there's a phase of the fight where she turns into what seems to be a cardboard cutout. In an article by Texas Real Food, it is said that eating cardboard can obstruct the gastrointestinal tract and cause things like vomiting, pain, and nausea. So South Stage Play is still not edible even when she's a cardboard cutout because cardboard cannot be eaten. I don't think a single person is gonna watch this video. Rats? <laughs> I hate rats. Verner vermin is a rat, animals that are commonly associated with diseases and plagues and ratatouille. So it might surprise you when I say that rats are actually edible. In an article written in 2016, the National Institutes of Health says that rats are commonly eaten in places like Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Indonesia. Also, the caveat is not edible as it's actually just a robot that Verner is controlling. Speaking of robots... Um, guys? Is this Freddy Fazbear? Dr. Cal's a human, meaning that he's automatically not edible, but what about his robot? Well, what do you think? Obviously, his robot is not edible either, as it's made of metal, and eating it can lead to bowel perforation, sepsis, and death, according to the recurring character that is the National Institute of Health. For those like me who don't know what bowel perforation or sepsis are, the former is a hole in the wall of your small intestine, while the latter is a condition that causes shivering, lightheadedness, fast breathing, and random sweating. It can also lead to septic shock, which is a dramatic drop in blood pressure that can damage certain organs and even lead to death. So there you have it. You will die if you eat Dr. Cow's robot. Uh? Cal and Maria is a weird one. She's a mermaid, meaning that she's both a human and a fish. Humans aren't edible, but fish are. So that begs the question, is Cal and Maria more human or more fish? Where the fish tail actually has human insides or vice versa? Also, Cal and Maria has an octopus and later snakes for hair. Is she wearing them as a wig to cover up her baldness like Gru and Despicable Me too? Or are the octopus and snakes a part of her? Is she part human, part fish, and part octopus snakes? And then there's a the question of if she's even part human in the first place. She seems to be a giant mermaid as it's a plane fight and the plane itself is much smaller than her, and her skin is also a light purplish color. What is she some sort of alien mermaid. Are those real? Since she's purple, what if Cal Maria is secretly a descendant of William Afton, the purple guy? I think I'm going insane! Cal Maria is just too confusing, so I'm just gonna say you're better off getting your fish somewhere like Red Lobster. That place is in Young Sheldon, so it must be good, right? I'm welding this locomotive engine. <laughs> The next stop is the Phantom Express, and right off the bat, you can't eat the first three parts of this fight. The first phase is literally just a ghost, the second is a human skeleton, and I'm not even sure what the third phase is, but it's also not edible. The fourth phase is not edible either, but on the others, I can actually say what's gonna happen if you eat this one. The final phase of the fight is a train, and trains contain steel. This means that, much like Dr. Cow's robot, if you eat this train, you'll get bowel perforation, sepsis, or even die and join the Phantom Express. Let's go gambling! King Dice is a big dice man, and you can't eat him because he's a bit too humanoid, but what about all the little goons you fight beforehand? The first mini boss is a tipsy troop. These are drinks, so they're definitely edible. Next is Chips Medigan, who's a stack of poker chips. The highly respected website poker.org says that clay is the best and most affordable material for poker chips. Assuming that Bedigan is made out of clay, eating him will result in lead poisoning, muscle weakness, intestinal blockage, skin sores, and breathing problems. So, I think it's safe to say that chip isn't edible. Mr. Weezy is a big cigar with mini and yellow teeth. Cigars contain nicotine, and eating that can result in things like vomiting, dizziness, and headaches. Not edible. Pippin Dot are dominoes, which are made of plastic. And Chang says that eating plastic can lead to dizziness, headaches, and respiratory problems or even poisoning symptoms. Also not edible. Hoppus Pocus is a rabbit, and rabbits are edible. The next mini boss is Fear Lap, and in order to avoid being put on more lists than this video has already put me on, I will not look up if skeletons are edible, and instead just assume that they're not. Pirulata is a roulette wheel, which are made of wood. We already went over why you can't eat wood, so Pirulata is not edible. Mango seed is a magic eight ball, which are also made of plastic, and again, we already went over why you can't eat that. The final condensed mini boss is Mr. Chimes, who's a monkey robot, and we also talked about why these aren't edible, so you can't eat Mr. Chimes. Since you can't eat a majority of the mini bosses, and you know, King Dice himself, and it's gonna consider this fight to be overall inedible. The devil! Can you eat the devil? That's the question.
He turns to animals throughout the first phase of the fight, but I don't think that necessarily makes him edible. I mean, he's the devil. What is he even made of? I'm just gonna say you can't eat him. The giant enemy spider. I consider Glum's the giant a human, so he's not edible. But an interesting thing about this fight is that in his final phase, he eats you. Glad to see someone getting into the spirit of this video. Freeze Freeze me! Freeze me! Like Glumstone, Mortimer Freeze is also an inedible human-like thing. The snow monster and snowflake in the second and third phase are technically edible since they're just made of snow and ice, but it's implied that the snow monster is just Mortimer covered in snow, and he's also just inside a snowflake so you can't actually eat Mortimer himself. When there's no cops around, anything's legal! The Mushai mob is a gang of crooks that consists of a spider, light bug, ant eater, and snail. The spider, ant eater, and snail are edible, but the light bug isn't. Eating a light bug can result in poisoning, which is not good. However, since you can eat three of the four members, I'm just gonna consider the Mushai mob to be edible. <laughs> Esther when Chester's a cow, so you can eat her, and she's probably just gonna end up on a Wendy's Krabby Patty anyway. Esther literally turns into a can of sausages for her final phase. Definitely edible. Dog man! The howling aces are dogs, and while edible, I don't even want to consider eating dogs, because if someone ate mine, I would lose my cool. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I mean, I might hate these freaks of a past, and this is still the only boss that I struggle to beat, but I'm still gonna consider them not edible. We live in an actual nightmare! I'm pretty sure the angel and demon are just some kind of FNAF 4 dream or something, and you can't eat dreams, so not edible. No one knows the monster I've become. Chef Saul Baker is one of, if not my favorite boss in any game I've ever played. I could probably make an entire video about why this fight is just so incredible. But I'm not here to do that, I'm here to find out if he can be eaten. At first glance, the answer is no. After all, he's made of glass, and well, you can't eat glass. However, there's something interesting I noticed about Chef Soulbaker. In the fight's third phase, you fight the salt inside of the chef. However, here you can see something in the background. A destroyed Chef Soulbaker. Chef Soulbaker is dead, yet he lives. He lives in the form of salt. This is because Chef Soulbaker was never the big sentient soul shaker. He was the salt inside of it. The soul shaker was merely a vessel for him to use. And as if I haven't laid out enough evidence, when you finish this phase, the real salt baker and his heart show up from the broken vessel but hey that's just a theory a game theory <gasps> foxy foxy the ferocious so yeah, you can eat Chef Salt Baker because he's just salt. In conclusion, there are a lot less edible cupboard bosses than I thought. The game has 35 boss fights if you exclude the King's Leaf stuff, which I did. And out of the 35 boss fights, I only considered 12 of them edible. Now I feel stupid for making this video. That's like less than half these guys. I was sure there was gonna be more. I'm pretty sure this video was like 20% cuphead and 80% figuring out what will happen if you eat wood. But I had fun researching this, so whatever. Now if you excuse me, I've gotta go eat food. I've kind of forgotten to do that while working on this video. Uh, bye I guess.